Let us start today's uh, lecture uh, with uh, you know uh, chalking out the differences between the three statistics and then we will talk about the Bose-Einstein condensation uh, mainly from the historical point of view uh, and uh, giving you some details and then of course, we will uh, do an analysis of the Bose statistics and uh, get into uh, details of uh, or derivations of the Bose-Einstein condensation where we will be talking about the macroscopic buildup in the uh, lowest energy state of the system. Okay. So, uh, what are the main uh, differences? Uh, this is just listing out uh, them in the tabular format. So, uh, in Maxwell Boltzmann, which is abbreviated as MB, Bose Einstein as BE, and Fermi Dirac as FD. So, what is the particle nature in uh, MB uh, and BE and FD? So, in MB, they are distinguishable and uh, in B they are identical and indistinguishable and in F D they are identical and indistinguishable. Uh, of course, in B also they are identical, uh, but they are distinguishable. Uh, what are the experimental conditions that we get M B statistics? We get in low density of particles or high temperature or both. Uh, in B we have high density of particles and low temperature and similarly FD statistics would be valid uh, for uh, fermions at high density and low temperature. So, the quantum statistics become uh, visible or rather perceptible uh, at uh, large uh, density and low temperature. Uh, in the other limit all these fermions and bosons they act like uh, classical particles. So, uh, regarding the occupancy in a given energy level, there is no occupancy constraint in MB, uh, it is just that uh, the uh, partition function is uh, divided by n factorial, which we have seen elaborately. In B statistics, uh, there is no occupancy constraint again in a given energy level, and uh, in FT, there is a strong uh, occupancy constraint by the Pauli exclusion principle, which says that no two fermions should occupy the same energy state. Uh, what happens to their statistics? Now, what we mean by statistics is under the particle exchange what happens? Uh, in uh, Maxwell Boltzmann of course, it gives rise to a distinct state we have seen that and um, in uh, Bose Einstein it does not give you a distinct state and in fact, under the exchange of two particles uh, the wave function remains unaltered. Uh, this is called even exchange statistics. And uh, what happens in uh, Fermi Dirac? It follows odd exchange, which means that if you interchange two particles or swap the positions of the two particles, uh, then uh, you pick up a minus sign, which is uh, equivalent to a phase of pi. So, if you think in terms of phases, then uh, the Bose Einstein uh, particles or the particles which obey Bose Einstein statistics they do not uh, pick up a phase or the, the phase picked up by them is 0, whereas the phase picked up by the uh, fermions that is the ones that uh, obey Fermi Dirac statistics that is equal to pi. With regard to spin and of course, classical uh, particle has no concept of spin, spin is a purely quantum mechanical quantity uh, and the Bose-Einstein statistics is valid for integer spin and um, uh, for the other one that Fermi Dirac is uh, for the fractional spin particles. So, uh, I show you a video here uh, and it tells you uh, something uh, first see the video. So, there is a person who is holding the cup and is rotating the hand, he's fully rotated the hand and he has now rotated it twice and it comes back to the original point. Now, this tells you that the fermions actually behave like this because uh, under uh, twice uh, or rather a 4 pi uh, exchange that is if you exchange it or take it around the other. So, one particle is taken around the other, it picks up a minus sign, you take two, one more time that is uh, a, a rotation of 4 pi, it comes back to the same point. So, it is it's basically showing that. So, this uh, the cup in the hand is like a fermion which is undergoing a full 2 pi rotation does not come back to the point it picks up a minus sign or a minus 1 and then now it picks up under another full rotation it picks up this uh, the a sign 1. So, that means that if you do twice such exchanges you pick up a plus sign which is understandable. 
All right. So, uh, what prompted uh, Bose and Einstein to propose the statistics? What was not known at that time? I have uh, sort of told you um, in a bit, but now uh, let me tell you a little more about it. And everything started with the black body radiation, and uh, people used to study this black body radiation in the uh, initial days when uh, quantum mechanics was uh, developing. And uh, it was known since centuries that uh, something that is heated, a material is heated, particularly a metal, it radiates heat and the color uh, that it emits or the electromagnetic radiation that it emits depends on the temperature. Uh, so, for example, if you have seen heating elements of a stove or a heating coil, uh, then it initially gets dark red which becomes uh, you know. Uh, 550 degree centigrade or so, it becomes bright red at uh, 700 degree centigrade and then orange, yellow and then finally white uh, which is really hot. Okay? So, the emission spectra, emission of the electromagnetic wave, uh, that spectrum uh, depends on the material as well. I mean we are talking about, so if it is a nichrome wire or a copper wire and all that they would depend. So, uh, the, the electromagnetic spectrum will depend upon the wave uh, as well, I mean the material as well. And this was uh, noted by Max Planck uh, and he got a Nobel Prize in Physics uh, for this in 1918. Um, and in order to uh, explain this, there was this uh, Wien's displacement law that was proposed which said that this lambda max that you see here, so actually the way, uh, electromagnetic radiation that uh, has a non-monotonicity. So, this is uh, in the y axis you have this intensity or uh, in arbitrary units maybe, and this is the wavelength in the x axis and you see that there are uh, 4 blue curves, this one at uh, 1800 Kelvin uh, which is the sharpest and then 1500 Kelvin, 1200, 900 and so on. So, all these 4 temperatures and you see that uh, the lambda max is shifting towards slightly towards lower energies. Okay, so, Wien actually proposed that this lambda max that is a maximum wavelength at which basically at which the intensity maximum occurs that is the lambda max. So, for this particular thing this is the lambda max and so on. Okay. So, this lambda max for uh, this uh, temperature. So, lambda max into temperature is a constant uh, and uh, this is called as the Wien's constant and he uh, this Wilhelm uh, Wien he got a Nobel Prize in 1911 uh, in an effort to explain this black body radiation. Of course, that does not uh, uh, show the characteristic, but uh, at least it predicts a value for this uh, lambda max into the temperature in uh, Kelvin. Okay. And uh, then uh, you know the visible light is just an information that they lie between visible light actually lies between 4000 to 7000 or close to 8000 maybe. Ultraviolet is uh, less than uh, 4000 angstrom or 400 nanometer and infrared is uh, like greater than 700 or 800 nanometer. So, uh, there is also another effort by Rayleigh and Jeans and uh, probably called as Rayleigh and Jeans formula in which the intensity actually uh, is shown as uh, so this by this formula and so on. So, that is a 1 by lambda to the power 4. So, that is again valid uh, for this uh, part of the spectrum that is a, a larger wavelength of the spectrum, but it of course, does not uh, tell you that there is a uh, going up and coming down. So, this non monotonicity is not uh, explained. So, this uh, remained as one of the outstanding problems in the uh, in the beginning of this uh, 20th century continued for a while. Okay? And uh, these uh, major flaw at this short wavelength is known as the ultraviolet catastrophe and uh, this had to be settled. Okay? And uh, uh, then uh, came uh, S n Bose, so S n Bose here the Indian physicist and of course, who does not know about uh, Einstein. And in 1924, uh, Bose proposed uh, these uh, statistics which is the average number of particles is equal to uh, this 1 by exponential beta epsilon i minus mu and minus 1 and this has been shown earlier. 
and uh, this uh, when you plug it in into the average energy so this is the mean number of particles or average number of particles and so this is the distribution basically and from there you can calculate the average energy and then you can calculate the intensity of the radiation by multiplying that average energy with the speed of light and this is what we will do when we do black body radiation and this correctly reproduce the formula that uh, was uh, or rather this uh, trend a non monotonic trend that you have just noticed in this uh, slide here. Okay. So, just plot it for a single temperature, but uh, it shows this, this non monotonic. Uh, so, this behavior that it, it sort of goes up and then it uh, comes down that is explained very well. All right. So, these are Bose and Einstein and uh, this happened in 1924. This was uh, Bose's discovery and when uh, it was uh, you know consulted upon by Einstein he saw the merit of this and uh, this immediately you know uh, became uh, a nice uh, sort of proposal and the proposal was uh, not only to resolve the black body radiation uh, and which incorporates basically the photon statistics that we have seen earlier it opened up possibilities for uh, macroscopic accumulation of particles uh, in one energy state which is called as a Bose-Einstein condensation and in short it is called as a BEC. Okay. And uh, even though it was in 1924 it took nearly 71 years uh, to uh, get this thing realized in labs and uh, it was finally done and why was there a such a long wait because you need to go to very low temperature to see these uh, atomic condensates forming because they cannot form at large uh, temperatures and we will see that uh, why they do not form at large temperature. And uh, the reason is that uh, accessing temperatures uh, or rather the technology of uh, 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 reaching very low temperature and really we are talking about uh, you know micro to nano Kelvin. So, it is probably the coldest thing in the universe that one can even think of and you have to prepare that in the lab you have to have uh, a low uh, sort of 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 6 number of atoms and they would uh, show this condensation phenomena I will tell you what the condensation phenomena is but uh, just show uh, is this showing it just uh, in the uh, you know their experimental data you see the Cornell and Wyman have done it in 95 and just 4 months later Ketterle also did it um, with uh, uh, you know bosonic atoms like rubidium and, and other atoms and uh, what they see is that in the left picture you see that uh, this one uh, if I see a yellow no yeah, there is a yellow. So, this is at T greater than T c and this is at T equal to T c and this is T uh, less than T c. So, what is T c? T c is the, uh, the transition temperature or the critical temperature at which the Bose-Einstein condensation occurs. So, if the temperature is uh, greater than that critical temperature let us call it as T c then you do not see any uh, condensation. Now, this is a slightly misleading picture it might give you a feeling that you are seeing the build up in real space it is not in fact this is a build up in the momentum space. So, uh, there is a certain technology uh, if I get time I will tell you more about that technology and at least try to tell you in brief that uh, what it is all about uh, is called the time of flight measurement. So, once these uh, BEC is formed then you slowly release some trap, trap is uh, which uh, helps you to achieve very low temperature and once you uh, release that trap the atom starts flying um, away or flying apart and uh, you take the, the photographs in quick succession by a very high speed camera and then Fourier transform it and uh, put it in K space. So, these Fourier transform spectroscopy is what you see. So, uh, there is likelihood of build up of particle in the central region that you can see here and um, at T equal to T c uh, the, uh, the K equal to 0 or the 0 energy states start getting macroscopically occupied and at T less than T c you see that the peak is sharper and more number of uh, atoms are there in the k equal to or rather almost all the atoms are there in the k equal to 0 or e equal to 0 state 
and this is what has been uh, seen by them as a proof of Bose-Einstein condensation. So, a given energy state accommodates all the particles and why does it happen, uh, how does it happen, under what conditions does it happen, uh, what are the uh, implications of such a build up, we will all see that. Okay. So, uh, 1924 was the initial discovery and 1995 was the like getting these uh, condensed sets in lab. Okay. So, this is uh, the first time it was seen in uh, Colorado uh, at uh, this boulder uh, and um, in USA. Okay. So, uh, let me show another uh, schematic video and uh, this is uh, again from the internet. So, I uh, will show you this video, it will show you that uh, how the particles uh, which are like randomly moving around uh, holding their particle identity like classical particles as you reduce the temperature they lose their identity of particle and they uh, kind of become like waves and below a certain temperature or very close to zero temperature they become like one giant wave and that is the Bose-Einstein condensation. See this. So, that is your energy scale here. Uh, so, you see that uh, there are these uh, the temperature is uh, measured in this along the thermometer and these these particles are moving around. Now, the temperature is falling, the particles are becoming slow and they are uh, you know gaining in terms of their ex, uh, I mean their uh, spread over a uh, larger space and the temperature is still lower and uh, they are uh, moving slower and slower and they are coalescing uh, in some sense and uh, these uh, coalesce will finally they become one giant matter wave and that is what uh, BEC is all about. It is just a cartoon of that, but it helps you to realize that as you lower the temperature and if these uh, particles are allowed to occupy the same quantum state or the energy state, uh, they will uh, they will occupy that and that will lead to Bose-Einstein condensation. And this is known as, uh, this is taken from this uh, site and uh, I acknowledge uh, uh, them, I mean I acknowledge this video uh, and uh, show it here. So, now, we um, show this uh, different cooling techniques, this is uh, a laser cooling. So, laser is being you know uh, uh, targeted uh, from all directions, all the six directions and it is impinging on this uh, blue colored which is uh, the atom which you are trying to cool and this is another magnetic trap. You see that there are these uh, magnets which are green in color and then there are these inside that there is this. Uh, atomic condenser which you are trying to condense and uh, these laser uh, beams are being uh, they are made to impinge on that. And uh, finally, uh, I will not go too much into details about uh, the cooling techniques and uh, uh, you, you actually do this that uh, what you do is that you uh, as if you reduce the cup size, cup means the, the, uh, the cup of coffee that you have and uh, what we do is that we try to blow from the top so that uh, the more energetic molecules do not touch our lips and so that we, we are safe from burning. So, what we do is that we throw away or rather get rid of the more energetic atoms and this is done exactly by reducing the cup height uh, as you see that the cup is uh, you know uh, largest at the left extreme and then it is it's growing in size and only the atoms which have very low energy which means very low temperature because energy is equivalent to temperature, they only stay and that will help you this kind of uh, traps will help you to get uh, the atoms which are very cold and so that the condenser can be achieved. So, basically uh, what Bose might have realized is the following that uh, he understood that this statistics has got something to do with the condensation phenomena. You can take two uh, uh, say balls which are marked as A and B and of course, they are identical, but just for our own convenience we have uh, written them or marked them as A and B and there are two boxes which are like the quantum states uh, which the particles can occupy. 
So for a Boltzmann particle, it's A1, B1, A2, B2, A1, B2, A, B2, A1 and B2 and A2 and B1, all four are distinct possibilities, which means that uh, A1, B1 means both the balls are in box 1, A2, B2, uh, both the balls are in box 2. Uh, first in A is in 1, B is in 2, A is in 2, B is in 1. Now for both particles, we do not have this distinction, but we still write it. They both can be in box 1, they both can be in box 2 and one can be uh, in one, the other can be in two or vice versa, but they would give rise to same, same state. Okay? So, that tells you that uh, these uh, combinations are um, you know more, they are like uh, one third uh, of these combinations. So, these are two combinations out of three. out of 3, whereas these two are 2 out of 4. So, if the particles are indistinguishable and you do not restrict the occupancy of particles in a given energy level, then they are more likely to be bunched together and that is the essence of uh, Bose-Einstein condensation. So, this uh, shows that there is uh, you know these two will get uh, two third weight as opposed to half which is there in the uh, in the classical particle. So, uh, this is what I conjecture that Bose must have realized this uh, which lays the foundation of the Bose-Einstein condensation. Okay. So, we will uh, you know do this uh, calculation of the Bose-Einstein uh, condensation. So, we start with really ideal Bose systems, ideal Bose gas. So, we have Bose particles, uh, bosons and uh, they are not interacting with each other, they are free bosons and we are talking about three dimensions and uh, these particles have non-relativistic dispersion, parabolic dispersion which is E going as k square. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we need to understand that the classical limit which tells you n lambda cube is much smaller than 1 is no longer valid. And in fact, we uh, are uh, explicitly saying this because we are going to talk about low temperature uh, from the preceding discussion. It must be clear that uh, we are really interested in the quantum regime and where this uh, exotic phenomena or this novel phenomena would uh, is like more likely to occur. So, that is where we are interested in. So, this is no longer valid. Okay? So, we uh, do not still have a temperature to be large and density to be small. In fact, we are in the other limit okay? and where uh, just to remind you that lambda is given by this uh, which we might have written as lambda t which means that this is uh, uh, the thermal de Broglie wavelength and this is the expression for the thermal de Broglie wavelength. Okay? Uh, now, we are coming to the other limit that is n lambda cube is of the order of 1 and uh, this uh, of course, uh, is the uh, extreme quantum limit or we are going to the uh, quantum limit. which means that uh, the temperature is low and the density of particles is high. And now, uh, what happens is that uh, let us try to uh, do the, the analysis of such a system or uh, classical Bose system in presence under this condition. Okay? So, uh, the way we start is the following. We uh, would uh, uh, express um, Zg. Uh, that is the canonical or grand canonical partition function rather uh, or log of z g okay, uh, in terms of the equation of state. This is an important step. And what we do is that uh, uh, if you remember that log of z g was nothing but minus phi over k t. This was written earlier where phi is the grand potential.
okay. Uh, and uh, this is uh, almost similar in form to the canonical partition function which is related to the uh, Helmholtz free energy okay, or uh, that F. Uh, now, it is a grand potential and if you remember that we have said this earlier that this grand potential uh, or you can write it with a G here. So, this phi G is nothing but F uh, T V N that is the free energy the Helmholtz free energy and minus mu n. So, that tells us that uh, this is equal to um, you know uh, P V minus P V over K T. This has been written down earlier that tells us that log of Z G is equal to P V over uh, K T uh, sorry this is P V minus P V and so this is P V over K T. And this is how we uh, relate the, the equation of state to the partition function, grand canonical partition function and in this particular case we have related it to the uh, log of z g. Okay. All right, so uh, this is the starting point and we will use this. So, we will write down a log of uh, z g is equal to P v over k t and um, equal to minus of i and log of 1 minus z f which is the fugacity exponential minus beta epsilon i. So, this is the form for this uh, partition function uh, log of the partition function let us call this as equation 1. And uh, in addition to that uh, we will also uh, so z f is nothing but exponential beta mu. And in addition to that, we will write down a second equation as well for the total number of particles which is equal to n i sum over i and that is equal to sum over i 1 divided by z f inverse which means exponential minus beta mu and exponential minus beta epsilon i minus 1. So, this we will call as equation 2 and these two are the starting point of our analysis of ideal Bose systems and uh, from here on we will show that um, if you have favorable condition that is if you are at very low temperature uh, there could be a macroscopic buildup of particle in the lowest energy state which is what this Cornell, Wyman and uh, Ketterly have shown um, in their experiments with uh, atomic condensates. So, um, now here uh, I uh, remind you one more thing that is uh, if you need to convert this uh, sum into the integrals we would need the density of states. And this density of states was derived earlier that uh, it basically just asks you a question that in k space if you have a sphere of radius uh, k and k plus d k then how many states are there in this uh, in this annular region and these give you the density of states and we would call it as g k d k um, and this g k d k is easy to compute. Uh, you simply say that uh, you know if you have uh, like uh, this is uh, if you walk a distance uh, 2 pi over l in 1 d you get 1 k point. Uh, and if you uh, walk a unit distance you get uh, L over 2 pi k point uh, and if you walk a distance d k uh, you get a L over 2 pi into d k k points. This have been done earlier and we just simply uh, take it to 3 dimension by doing a cube of that this gives you a cube and this now between k and k plus d k that is the annular region between 2 the spheres of radii k and k plus d k we have a annular region which is 4 pi k square d k and then this has to be multiplied by 4 pi k square d k. Okay. Uh, now, you see you have a d k and you have a k square uh, I mean sorry the d k should not be written twice. So, it is 4 pi k square d k. Now, k square is like energy and d k uh, will be uh, again you use this relation. So, use uh, e is equal to h cross square k square over 2m. 
that is the parabolic dispersion, non relativistic parabolic dispersion and we are specifically talking about uh, uh, 3D. So, we have a d epsilon is equal to uh, h cross uh, square k by m d k and uh, this k is nothing but so, uh, so d k um, is equal to m by h cross square and then k is nothing but root over 2 m e uh, by um, h cross square. So, uh, this will come out and we will have a h cross there. Uh, so, that is your k. So, k is equal to uh, root over 2 m e um, by h cross square. So, this is inside the square root. So, this is like root over 2 m e and 1 by h cross. So, that is what we have written root over 2 m e and then of course, uh, you have a d k, this is the d k and then we put it back into this thing. So, your d epsilon will have now uh, a root over epsilon coming from d k and an epsilon. Uh, now, this uh, d k will have uh, uh, we will have a d epsilon of course and then uh, we have it. Uh, so, this if we combine this and convert it into uh, g epsilon d epsilon uh, in order to get uh, uh, the number of states between uh, epsilon and epsilon plus d epsilon by um, using this uh, you know uh, dispersion relation. Uh, what we land up with is uh, that it is 2 pi uh, v and then of course, we have this uh, h cube and then we have this 2 m to the power uh, 3 by 2 epsilon to the power half d epsilon and so on. So, this is the density of states that we need to convert this integrals into sum. This has been done earlier, uh, please uh, go through this once more and uh, you will uh, be able to solve 1 and 2 by using this density of states. But this density of states, let me write it once again because this is an important uh, quantity here. So, this 2 pi v by uh, h cube 2 m to the power 3 by 2 epsilon to the power half d epsilon and so on. Okay. So, uh, you have a term which is k square which is epsilon and you have a, a d k which has uh, an epsilon there. So, uh, this is uh, the d k will have an epsilon in the denominator right because uh, this will be uh, inverse of that uh, and, and that is how you have a epsilon to the power half okay? uh, because uh, there will be 1 by root epsilon and epsilon coming from the k square. So, that will give you epsilon to the power half. Okay? All right. So, uh, I have missed that earlier. So, please correct that. So, there is an uh, inverse of that. Uh, so, you put both epsilon, I mean both k and d k there in this expression to you. So, you get g epsilon. But uh, this tells you uh, this is a little strange or rather uh, it sort of uh, is misleading because this assigns, assigns uh, 0 weight to the epsilon equal to 0 state. Now, it could happen and as it happens here, this is the most important state that we have or rather we need. So, uh, we cannot assign a 0 weight to that because this should uh, now be treated separately. Okay? If it is there, it should be stated, uh, treated separately because this is the most important state under consideration for this problem at very low temperature and maybe at larger uh, densities. Okay? So, we will write down this uh, expressions for the pressure and the number of particles as uh, p over k t that v has been taken uh, or cancelled with this other uh, this v that you see in the uh, density of states and this is equal to minus 2 pi over h cube uh, and 2 m to the power 3 by 2 and uh, I convert it into the integral with this epsilon to the power half log of 1 minus z f exponential minus beta epsilon d epsilon. See when you convert it into 
um, an integral, then this i index should not be carried over because i index really means that you are summing over some index. So, we use continuum notation for the epsilon. So, this is everything plus uh, or rather uh, plus means there is a contribution coming from the 0 energy which is nothing but that is uh, simply uh, log of 1 minus zf. Okay. So, that uh, if you look at this, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, in this expression, so if you uh, really put epsilon equal to 0, you get a log 1 minus zf and that is the contribution for epsilon equal to 0, so one term. Now, you may be wondering that we have still written 0 to infinity uh, even though we have uh, uh, separated out the contribution of epsilon equal to 0. See, this is a continuum um, integral or rather it is an integral with some uh, integrand and this uh, integral just goes from all energies just accepting that epsilon equal to 0 to infinity. So, whether you start from a very small number leaving out epsilon equal to 0 or in the integral form you write 0 to infinity, it really does not matter to the integral. Okay? But really the epsilon equal to 0 contribution to pressure is coming from here. Pressure means uh, P by kT. Um, so, we have there is no V here and we have separated out this is for all uh, contributions where epsilon not equal to 0 contribution. Okay. Let us call this as equation uh, number 3, 3 here and let us call this as equation number 4 and let us uh, write down the other equation as well and let us write down the number equation which is 2 pi by h cube 2 m to the power 3 by 2 uh, 0 to infinity. Once again that same uh, approximation is done, it is epsilon to the power half and there is a zf inverse exponential beta epsilon minus 1 and plus the epsilon equal to 0 contribution. So, this is epsilon not equal to 0 and this is the epsilon equal to 0 contribution which is simply zf divided by 1 minus zf. You can see that very easily if you go to this thing. So, I put epsilon equal to 0. So, it is a 1 by zf inverse minus 1 and then that can be written in this form. Okay? So, that is uh, zf divided by 1 minus zf. So, this is co called as equation number 5. So, this is epsilon equal to 0. So, before we proceed, uh, let us try to see that uh, what are the implications of these two terms which are for epsilon equal to 0, whether they are significant or they are insignificant, if they are significant, why they are significant and if they are insignificant, uh, we will uh, sort of have to ignore them or neglect them which is perfectly fine. But there should be a strong rational behind that and that is what we wish to see. Okay. So, uh, if you look at the second term of equation, uh, we have called it as 5 I guess, yeah equation 5, the last equation, second term of equation 5. Okay. So, I uh, single it out because this is important and uh, this term is nothing but 1 by V Zf divided by 1 minus Zf. Now, in the classical limit, uh, this term is negligible because uh, this term has no meaning uh, because zf is much much smaller than 1 and this term is negligible. But in the quantum limit that is when uh, zf becomes uh, almost equal to 1, uh, this term actually becomes very large because of the denominator blows up. So, this term uh, we can call it as uh, this term is uh, 1 by V Zf divided by 1 minus Zf uh, and we because we are writing uh, the density of particles. So, this is clearly the density corresponding to epsilon equal to 0 that is the lowest energy state. So, let us call that as N0 by V that is the uh, number density for the uh, the lowest energy state of the system and this is extremely large 
In fact, this can be infinity because this lowest energy state bosons, uh, any energy state rather, uh, there is no occupancy constraint, but this lowest energy state certainly has no occupancy constraint in the limit z f uh, going to 0. Okay. So, uh, this is definitely important. and should not be missed in some sense. Okay, so, I do a box of this and something that here I also take a box of this and then we should not miss it. Now, let us look at the second term of equation 4. What is the second term of 4? That is uh, there is a minus 1 over v log of 1 minus z f. Okay. Uh, how do we write this term? Because uh, we have uh, you know, um, so uh, we got in the quantum limit z f 1 minus z f this is equal to n 0 which is the occupancy of the lowest energy state epsilon equal to 0 state. So, if you solve uh, for uh, z f in terms of n 0, then z f comes out to be n 0 divided by n 0 plus 1. Okay. And um, if you uh, really look at this n 0, so n 0 is nothing but exponential beta mu, that is the uh, occupation and exponential beta mu and so on. So, or, or we can write it as uh, you know 1 divided by exponential minus beta mu uh, minus 1. So, that is your uh, n 0. So, 1 minus z f is equal to 1 minus n 0 divided by n 0 plus 1. So, this is n 0 plus 1 uh, n 0 plus 1 minus n 0 which is equal to 1 over n 0 plus 1. Okay. And uh, this can be uh, you know uh, written as uh, 1 over n 0 because n 0 is very large. So, 1 can be neglected. So, uh, this term that you see uh, minus uh, 1 over v uh, log of 1 minus z f is nothing but uh, this is equal to um, a 1 over v log of uh, n 0. Okay. Now, uh, this can be neglected because n 0 may be very large number. First, you are taking a log and then you are dividing it by v, the volume and uh, in the thermodynamic limit, your volume is very large. So, this still can be neglected. So, in the pressure expression, we may not take the second term, but in the number of particles expression, we should definitely keep the second term which is the most important. So, that tells us that uh, we are uh, having a sort of situation in which uh, these two equations that we have, uh, this term can be neglected. So, neglect this term and this term is important and cannot be neglected. Okay. And uh, we have these two equations as the guiding equations to get our um, Bose-Einstein condensation. Let me now try to solve these two uh, integrals. Uh, the P has uh, just, I mean both of them have one integral each and let us try to see this integral and uh, so okay so uh, this integral in uh, in equation uh, what is that equation uh, the equation 4 can be uh, written as so it's like your epsilon to the power half log of 1 minus uh, zf exponential minus beta epsilon d epsilon along with some factors so, we uh, convert that into some kind of an x to the power half uh, 1 minus z f e to the power minus x d x just to uh, sort of notational simplicity and this is from 0 to infinity. 
So uh, we'll do an integration by parts where um, you know there's a rule called uh, I let which means that the log function if it's there in the integrand that should be taken as the first function uh, for you know ease in the uh, computation and that uh, so we do that so this becomes equal to 1 minus zf e to the power minus x. So here we write x equal to epsilon just that and then integral x to the power half dx from um, 0 to infinity uh, and we have a minus term and uh, then we also have uh, because of this there will be another minus sign and this will be like a zf e to the power minus x uh, divided by 1 minus zf e to the power minus x and we have x to the power 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 and so on and then we do some simplification and this is from 0 to infinity. Now this term is equal to 2 third um, x to the power 3 by 2 log of 1 minus zf e to the power minus x and the limits are 0 and infinity and plus a 2 uh, third zf uh, 0 to infinity x to the power 3 by 2 e to the power minus x and 1 minus zf exponential minus x. Now you see uh, this term is 0 at both the ends that is both the extremities. In the lower extremity you have to put x equal to 0 so the integral will be 0 because of that and in the other extremity you will put uh, this x equal to infinity. So, this exponential minus infinity will go to 0. So, this will be a log 1 minus 1. So, that will become that will again give you a 0 and uh, uh, well I mean uh, not uh, so exponential minus infinity will go to 0 and it will be log 1 not 1 minus 1. So, this will be 0 in uh, the upper limit in the infinity limit and this is equal to 0 uh, in the uh, x equal to 0 limit. So, this is uh, x equal to infinity limit. Okay. So, this term is 0. So, we are left with only this term. Now, what have we achieved? If we look at this form and look at the form that we have uh, obtained for this uh, other term which is epsilon to the power half that is the energy or the occupancy or rather the density of particles in all the energy states apart from the epsilon equal to 0 state. So, it takes a form of that kind accepting that this uh, power of the numerator of epsilon is not half but it is 3 by 2. Uh, all the other things are same and that tells us that we have this x to the power 3 by 2 and that tells us that uh, this 2 can be written as uh, in a similar form using what is called as a Bose-Einstein integral. I will give you a more uh, sort of thorough uh, treatment of that, but now I do not want to disturb the flow of this discussion and let me see what we arrive at for the pressure term and as well as the number of particles now. So, uh, if you use um, the other term, so this is let us say uh, the one that we have to calculate. So, now uh, we uh, write down this uh, the number equation as n minus n 0 divided by v which is equal to 2 pi into 2 m k t uh, divided by uh, h cube and 0 to infinity and we have x to the power half dx divided by a zf inverse e to the power x minus 1 uh, that is the integral that we have and uh, if we introduce a Bose-Einstein integral. of the form so this is the form of the bose einstein integral uh, this z will be nothing but zf this z is some uh, arbitrary uh, you know uh, variable here this is equal to 1 by gamma n uh, 0 to infinity x to the power n minus 1 dx um, z to the power minus 1 e to the power x minus 1 
and let us call that as uh, what was the equation number that we were at. Uh, well, we were at this equation 5 and then we have not defined a new equation. Let's, so, this uh, let us define it as equation 6 and let us uh, define this as equation 7. So, uh, now uh, we can write uh, these both the expressions that is uh, the pressure expressions and the number of particle expression as P by K T and this uh, is equal to 1 over lambda cube. Again, this uh, thermal de Broglie wavelength comes up and we have a, a g 5 by 2 z f where g is this Bose-Einstein integral. Let us call this as equation 8 and we have n minus n 0. So, we take into account this n 0 on the other side and write it n minus n 0 which becomes the occupancy of the all the excited states put together. So, from the total number of particles we take out the energy occupancy or uh, not energy, but the occupancy of the epsilon equal to 0 state and this is equal to 1 over lambda cube g 3 by 2 z f. You see uh, there is a factor half and there is a one uh, let me use a pointer. There is a factor of half here x to the power half and there is a x n minus 1 and if you look at this uh, other thing uh, which has x to the power 5 by 2 let me go to that. So, there is a factor which is 3 by 2 here. So, we have a factor that is 3 by 2 here and then n minus 1. So, n will be 5 by 2 here and here n will be equal to in the in the top expression in equation 6 n will be equal to 3 by 2. So, these are the two equations let uh, you know uh, label them as 8 and 9 and these two are the parent equations that we are interested in and these will uh, sort of give us an idea about the Bose-Einstein condensation. Lambda as usual is h over you know uh, root over 2 uh, pi uh, 2 m k t 2 pi m k t. All right. So, all right, so we uh, now want to uh, sort of take this as the guiding equations and uh, uh, get expressions for pressure and the number of particles in the excited state. And uh, if we do the uh, expansion of this z uh, g n z f that is a Bose Einstein integral, uh, this can be written in a closed form as L equal to 1 to infinity. Uh, we will give you more insights on this Bose Einstein integral and um, this is L to the power n. So, this is for a given n you have to sum over L where L is in the denominator and n is there in the uh, sorry there is a z f to the power L. Okay. So, this is like z f plus a z f square by 2 to the power n plus a z f to the power cube by 3 to the power n and so on so forth. Okay. So, this is the Bose-Einstein integral and uh, we are interested in uh, z f to be close to 1 and that is the limit that we are interested in. So, um, this expansion till a finite number of terms is not valid because this expansion comes for small z f. Okay. So, we uh, just simply cannot do uh, a, an expansion and get some results. Had it been for z f to be small then uh, keeping you know first and second order would be good enough say first order would be good enough and that is what would give us the classical limit which we will see later. Now, n minus n 0 that is equal to the n e x c let us this means the excited state occupancy. And this is uh, nothing but equal to v and then you have a 2 pi m k t by h cube whole to the power 3 by 2 and a g 3 by 2 z f. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, uh, we are of course, uh, we know that uh, so we need uh, mu to actually um, the occupation cannot be negative. 
So, we demand that uh, uh, 0 is of course, z f less than equal to 1. So, we uh, want you know mu to uh, approach 0. from the negative side. Okay. So, that uh, tells you that your g 3 by 2 which is there in this expression of uh, in uh, equation number 9. So, g 3 by 2 1 z f equal to 1 this is equal to 1 plus uh, 2 to the power 3 by 2 plus all that this has a closed form it is called as a Riemann zeta function 3 by 2 and has a value which is 62.612. Okay. Now, I am coming at is that if we look at this last equation that is equation number 9 and um, evaluate this expression for z f equal to 1 and that is that is what we are interested in and uh, there uh, we get a value. So, this there is a particular value of this uh, of this form at a given temperature okay? uh, and uh, which what it means is that if you have uh, the number of atoms to be uh, lesser than that then of course, all the available energy states are occupied because the excited states have some energy and the total number is less than that. So, all the particles are delocalized and which will happen at uh, you know temperature say greater than some critical temperature. Now, as you are at, at very low temperature and um, you know that uh, and there is a macroscopically large number of particles that is if your n is very large much larger than your um, n excited which means. So, this is like a n excited uh, state occupancies by V. So, your n excited is limited okay? and which means that if you have very large number of particles where would they go? They would go to the 0 energy state and this is called as a Bose-Einstein condensation. So, uh, the, the very fact that the there is a limited occupancy for all the excited states put together um, at very low temperature. Uh, the remaining particles or all the uh, this very large number of particles will go to the lowest energy state because the lowest energy state has infinite occupancy. This is what we have said that this has infinite occupancy because you see that uh, it is here. So, this has infinite occupancy because Z f goes to um, 1 uh, is uh, this uh, fraction diverges and N 0 becomes uh, extremely large or it goes to infinity. So, the when you have the ground state to have or the lowest energy state to have infinite occupancy. So, if you have more number of particles uh, than what the excited states put together can hold all the other particles will go to the ground state and this is called as the Bose-Einstein condensation and it will of course, happen at um, given temperature and uh, this uh, is given by this. Uh, so, the n excited uh, will uh, have this v over lambda cube g to the power 3 by 2 1, 1 means z f equal to 1. So, this is the n excited max at t at a given t and this upper limit actually decreases with uh, decreasing temperature and uh, uh, the ground state or there is macroscopic uh, accumulation of particle at very low temperatures. And this is called as the Bose-Einstein condensation. Okay. So, this uh, as I said that this uh, maximum uh, occupancy of the excited states will go down with temperature. So, as you the total n is very large 
all of them will have to go to the ground state and there's a ground state accumulation. And this is what these uh, picture that you have seen earlier here that at t uh, less than tc you have a macroscopic accumulation at k, k uh, this epsilon equal to 0 which of course corresponds to k equal to 0 because e equal to k square uh, or h cross square k square by 2 1 and this was predicted by Bose Einstein statistics which were later you know experimentally observed in labs okay. We have many details to cover uh, we will stop here and we will carry on uh, from uh, next class onwards and um, uh, you have to remember that uh, it is going to get uh, mathematically a little challenging uh, to uh, get all the information regarding pressure or uh, internal energy or uh, various other things that are associated with it, how uh, is uh, what is the contribution to pressure uh, you know above TC, below TC and various other things and uh, if it is a, a Bose-Einstein condensation is a transition is a phase transition uh, is it uh, is called as some uh, you know new state of matter uh, then uh, there must be a uh, this transition temperature and this transition temperature uh, has to uh, now it has to be decided that what is the order of transition and so on. So, there are many details that are associated with which will uh, do it. Uh, in the next uh, class. So, I will stop here and uh, thank you once again.